Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. I'm beyond excited for today's episode. We have Trevor Smith here with us who you've probably seen him on our social feeds. We've done a couple videos with him now. Um, you, he's great follow. We're going to talk about a topic today that is really, really important, especially with the winter coming up. But first off, thank you so much, Trevor, for coming on the episode today. Hey, man. So great to be here. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, of course. So today's episode, winter's coming up. I know it's hard to believe that. It felt like summer just started, but winter is going to be coming up. And with that, you're going to get rain, snow, cold, all the things that make it hard to exercise your dog because most of the exercise we do for our dogs often happens outdoors. So today with Trevor, we're going to talk about some ways that you can exercise your dog indoors, both physically and mentally, um, to give them that just stimulation and exercise that they need. But before we dive into that, I'm going to give an overview of Trevor. Um, and just so you guys can kind of, kind of meet him a little bit more, but Trevor is a CPDTKA trainer, um, who's continually attending seminars, conferences, those types of things to just, you know, improve all of his knowledge about dogs and, and dog training in particular. Uh, and he is a strong advocate for pain and force-free methods and aversive methods, just like us here at Pufford. So we mesh really well on that side. Um, and when Trevor is not training dogs, him and his wife, who is a veterinarian, enjoy fun outdoor activities like scuba diving, zip lining, uh, taking their dogs on hikes. We talked a little bit earlier about playing video games as well before I got online uh, and they like that. So, uh, and also he's gotten into, you know, he does things like dog agility, dock diving, uh, a lot of fun dog activities. Activities. So, did I cover it all, Trevor? Did I give? Uh, most I mean, of it? you did a great job. And yes, I think that last note there, I think some of my growing uh, need for what we're going to talk about today has been from the dog sports area and doing some of these high activity dog sports with the dogs. But even just going on a hike with your dog, some of the activities that we're covering today is going to help prepare your dog to be physically and mentally ready for lots of fun adventures that you want to do with them. Awesome. I love it. So, let's let's get to it. The weather's bad. Your dog is getting a little stir crazy. You're thinking, what am I going to do? They don't like the snow or it's just too cold or it's too dark or whatever it is. So what are some of the ways that you can physically exercise your dog indoors? Yeah. So one of the main um, ways you can exercise your dog indoors, because when winter is coming and it's snowy outside, or if you're like here in the South in Texas of icing, <laughs> it's like, we don't really get snow. We get uh, just ice, but just any wet weather in general, is just no fun to take your dog out um, in the cold. Um, and then your some of your dogs, I know probably don't even want to go out in the cold. They have a hard time wanting to even go potty out in the cold for 10 seconds, let alone go for a walk around the block. So one of the things you can actually do is take two dog beds. What you think what you can do is exercise number one to physically exercise your dog is a bed to bed sprint. And basically you just take your dog going from one bed to the other bed and you walk them back and forth in the beginning. And once your dog gets the hang of this, you don't even have to move yourself. You can just pop a bag of chips out. You can sit on the couch and just send your dog from bed to bed. And they're just getting a nice little exercise going back and forth. You can toss them a treat on their bed as they hit the bed each time they get a cookie or even some of the times you just use their meals. Dogs work really good with their meals. Um, and if you happen to have one of those tasty pup for bags of treats around, then I definitely think they'd like that too. <laughs> And this is all stemmed from canine fitness. And why um, um, I want to talk to you guys about this today is because my dog, Daisy, who's a border collie, she's doing agility now. She actually got to made it to the finals in dog agility. And it's all because of canine fitness. And I went to the University of Tennessee to become a certified canine fitness trainer because I needed some more things to help my dog be prepared for everyday activities. Hmm. So uh, real quick on that with the certified what was their certified canine fitness instructor? Is that correct? Yeah. So CCFT certified canine fitness trainer, um, is it's a certification, um, developed by fit paws, uh, fit paws team and picked up and, um, in partnership with university of Tennessee. And I think university of Tennessee has, is the one that oversees all of it now. So, so what was the focus on in that? So, I mean, you know, you were saying you wanted it to prepare your dog for agility, you know, the high energy, high mm -hmm intense tasks. Um, what were some of the things that you went through in the, in that certification? Yeah. So we first went through a like two to three day, um, seminar process training. We also did a whole online courses, um, hours and hours of online training. 
Um, but basically the idea is how can we prepare our dog physically and work um, to get them ready for anything? Like, like I said before, hikes, um, you know, developing their core strength to be able to do sit pretty um, or being able to get your dog to be able to go over a jump or go through a tunnel or any of these other great dog sports. What are the physical things your dogs have to be able to be conditioned to do in order to be able to do that? And canine fitness has been kind of digging and diving into that. Just like we do with human sports, there's activities that you do or exercises that you do to prepare yourself to play basketball or to be able to do figure skating or whatever it is. Um, they're starting to really dive deep into the science and understanding how dogs can, their, their phys physical makeup um, affects their activity and be able to do um, higher levels of performance. I love it. That's super, super interesting. Um, so I love that first game, the bed to bed sprint, um, really easy to do. I mean, even if you just have kind of a smaller apartment, you can just set the beds on opposite sides of the room and, and get right. as much distance as you can. I love that. Uh, next game. What are, what are some other games that you can play with your dog inside? Yeah. So that bed to bed sprint's a great, what we call warm up activity. And we want to warm our dogs up before doing anything um, extreme with our canine fitness. And most people think when they think of canine fitness or fit pause gears, they think it's all about teaching a dog to, to balance on top of wobbly objects. But there's more to that, a lot more to that. One of the other games that you can do to warm up your dog is called spin and twist or circle left, circle right. So you just basically teach your dog to spin up around their body to the left and to the right. And you start this up pretty easily by just taking a treat and you lure from their nose to their tail and a big old circle. And sometimes that circle is really big just to get them going. And then eventually you can make those circles tighter or larger depending on how you want to warm them up. And this kind of gets their um, spine and uh, proprioceptiveness with their paws. Sorry, I said that too fast, but <laughs> sometimes it gets them warmed up with their spine, but their proprioception with their paws um, and making sure that they are ready to move around. Um, the big benefit, some of the stuff that you're going to see here is that you're going to also see kind of like a barometer of sense is how your dog is feeling that day. Mm. Um, sometimes when dogs aren't feeling so well, they don't really tell us, um, unless they show us physically. And, um, some of these activities that you can do, um, like, like one of my favorite ones is do puppy push-ups. is basically you use the down and the stand behavior and you go back and forth where you get them into a down position and then into a standing behavior. And that kind of looks like a push-up for dogs. Mm. Well, let's just say that one day you were working on this with your dog and they normally can do five puppy push-ups in a row. But for whatever reason, they only want to do like one or two and then they stop or they get distracted. Um, you kind of think that's kind of odd. You move about until the next day, but you start seeing your dog continually not being able to complete a full workout. They don't like to go. They don't like to spin to the right or they, and they only want to spin to the left when normally they've been fine going both directions. This could possibly be an indicator for you to know that, hey, maybe my dog is not feeling so good. Maybe they have an injured shoulder or. Um, maybe one of their paw pads is scraped up. You know, there's so many things that our dogs will hide when it comes to pain. And it's really hard to know when they're actually in pain versus, um, you know, just, you know, distracted. And one of the ways you can do to know that for sure is that if your dog has been very successful at these activities in the past, but all of a sudden they have stopped doing it or don't want to do it anymore. Um, it's definitely something maybe we can go take to the vet and go, Hey, my dog is acting different. I, I've noticed that when they, when I usually do this exercise, they do fine, but today they're really showing some pain. Um, and not, I'm, I wanted you guys to check it out make sure there's nothing serious happening. I love that. I think that's super important. And, and, and that's, it just got me thinking that, you know, us as pup parents, I think sometimes, like you were saying, our dogs are so good at hiding pain or, or they don't have a way to verbalize it. And so, you know, yeah. us just spending time with our dogs and like being aware of like, this is their normal, this is what typically is happening. And then being able to kind of step back and say, something's wrong. Let's figure out what it is. I know I've experienced that with my dogs where, you know, typically they're, they're playing fetch all day long, basically. Right. Like one of my dogs can just go forever with fetch and right. one day, yeah, she did happen to have like a cut on her pad and I wouldn't have noticed without, you know, just being oh, aware. Sure. Yeah. Like I do love that. I do love that. I do love the fact that, um, when you are more active with your dog and you build that connection, you can really start to tell those like little bitty signs, um, when they're in pain or something like that. And uh, what's hard is like the humans have, and when they go to the doctors, they have like a pain scale. They have like a frowny face on level one pain. And then they uh, are level uh, level 10 pain, but then they have a happy face on level one pain. So like uh, when the do when dogs are 
changing their moods or emotions. It's not until they get to about level seven or level eight of pain before they start to change their, mm-hmm. um, or show huge amounts of indicators that they're hurting. Now I say that I had my very first dog, my whip it, um, he stubbed his toe and he cried for five minutes. And so, like, some dogs, <laughs> just like people have like a very, very low pain tolerance. And, yeah. and uh, you know, he, he, he was a big baby, but uh, other dogs, some of you guys, especially you guys that are more active with your dogs, you know, they can have sometimes a very huge high pain tolerance and they won't tell you, they won't show you. And it, and it's really up to your vet. Like when you, if when in doubt, go to your vet is what we were taught um, in our canine fitness <laughs> um, tra- training is that if you don't know for sure what's wrong, but you just have a feeling, you know, it doesn't hurt to go to your vet. They can do some x-rays, maybe even have to do an ultrasound um, or sometimes for some dogs, depending on what it is, you know, do a blood panel just to make sure that your dog's feeling healthy without going into a whole different topic, but, you know, seeing your, your vet on a regular basis, on a yearly basis kind of helps kind of help your vet know what's normal for your dog too. So, um, so when you, when you let you, you, if, when you're actively doing these exercises and you're also taking your dog regularly to the vet once a year, at least just for a checkup, you're going to probably even sometimes prevent um, some really bad things. Like I hate to say the C word on this podcast. I'm not sure if it's illegal <laughs> to talk about uh, talk about um, cancer. But you know, one of the activities you can do after you do these canine fitness workouts is you can actually do a side by side pat down or pet down. And what you start you do is you start at the top of your dog's head and you start to move your hands across your dog's body, across their shoulders, down their chest, and evenly. So you have your left and your right hand almost mirroring each other across your dog's body and you get all the way down to the rear end to the tail and what you're feeling for is any unevenness like see maybe their right back leg is more muscular than their left back leg and you can kind of feel that or maybe you'll feel a hot spot or something like that like where one area of their body feels hotter than the rest those can be really great ways to kind of keep your dog in shape and make sure that they're feeling their best um, to do any activity with you super important i i don't think we you can't get enough reminders that keeping your dog's physical health in check is so, so important. I, lo- I love that too, of, of just like the, like we were talking, spending time with your dog, visually seeing what's happening with them, but also physically feeling them and looking for abnormalities, super important. Um, so, so, so far we've got some awesome ideas on, on how this fitness can help us like keep our dog's physical health in check. But in addition to that, we have the bed to bed sprint, the spin and twist, the puppy push-ups. Um, do you have any other physical indoor ideas that you have to, to help, yeah. help these pup parents tire their dogs out? Um, I'll give you guys one more. Um, it's called puppy sit-ups or puppy squats, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and all these activities I'm showing you guys, there, of course, there's a, a, a ton of canine fitness exercises out there, but the ones I'm showing you today um, require very little to no equipment. Um, activities or games that you've already probably taught your dog to do in the past. So we've done stand to down, a different, um, very common foundational exercise is, is sit to stand. So you go from a sit position into a stand position, and this kind of isolates the dog's rear end. Mm-hmm. And what's cool about um, both the puppy push-ups and the puppy sit-ups and getting them to do these exercises is once the dogs to do what we call um, a good flat work, where they're really solid on doing these movements back and forth, that's when you start to incorporate um, some elevation to it. You could even put their paws up onto um, their bed, their front two paws up on the bed, and then ask for a sit to stand or a stand to down behavior. And that will actually um, start to get them to, to shift weight from their front to their rear end. So they actually start to learn and you start to put, put more weight from their front all the way to the rear end and actually can give a more um, enriching workout. Um, so it's one of those little games you can do. So um, the puppy push-ups and puppy sit-ups tend to lean on what we call strength. Um, and there's five areas of canine fitness. Um, the mat to mat sprint or bed to bed sprint is what we call cardio. And depending if you, your dog's walking or running, you know, we're going to tackle two different types of cardio, whether it be anaerobic or aerobic, whether it be sprinting or whether it be marathon kind of type style. Most of the time you're going to be leaning towards the more sprinting type cardio with that, that exercise. Um, the spin and twist is good for kind of um, an active warm up. Um, when you're warming your dog up, you don't want to stretch them, like take their leg and stretch them. You never want to stretch a dog cold. Like we've learned with humans, you never want to stretch a human cold. You want to kind of have them warmed up before they get into any major physical activity or before stretching them out or anything like that. But spin and twist kind of d- d- dives into what we call flexibility. So cardio flexibility, 
And then we talk about is we talk about strength and the puppy push-ups, getting them from a stand to down to a down to stand. That's one um, strength building exercise and puppy sit-ups is um, getting them from a sit to stand and then a stand to a sit back and forth. Um, with those, um, that's building strength. And then the fourth area of canine fitness is called balance. And what you can do is what we're talking about before is put their front two paws up either onto their bed, or if you want to get one of those canine fitness discs or fitness bones, you can do that too and work on just a five to 10 second balance, make sure they can feel good with just their front two feet onto the object, and then start to um, ask for these other puppy push up or puppy sit up behaviors. Um, and then the final area of canine fitness is mental. Now, final, the funny thing, are you still there? Yeah, still there. I'll make sure. (laughs) You're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think we got a little little pause on that video, so I was making sure. Um, So the final area of canine fitness, which is everything, is um, mental and uh, making sure to exercise your dog's brain. And this right here is, uh, we always say in our canine fitness is everything is mental. So just doing these Mm -hmm. exercises alone is going to work your dog's brain. You'll be surprised. You Those that are used to taking their dog for a good half hour to an hour um, workout, uh, with the, you know whether it be walking around the block or taking them to the park, you'd be surprised with 15 to 20 minutes of these exercises or games working their brain and working their body, how tired they will be. And what's so cool is, like we said in the top of this podcast, is um, you can do this in any weather condition inside your house. So that actually leads into one of the questions, like one of the main questions I was thinking, because I, I think a lot of these, there, there's definitely <clears throat> like for myself, if I, if I'm out on a walk, it feels like, okay, we're going somewhere. There's something happening. Even when I'm playing fetch, it seems mm-hmm. less repetitious. These games, they're great. They feel like there is a good bit of repetition involved, which is obviously fine. So I think a lot of pup parents might be thinking, so how much should I be doing this? Like, you know, should I be doing Head spin and twist for a warm up, and then you know go to the sit ups, and then do sprints. Like, what what is your typical kind of like you said, fifteen to twenty minutes roughly? Like, what how do you kind of like break that up with these four different games? Exercises? Yeah, so I um, I typically like to spend about five minutes minimum warming my dog up using the either bed to bed sprint or the spin and twist or both. Uh, and that's a, you know, just a good solid five minute workout is just to get them going. And then I'll dive into about five to 10 minutes of strength building or core building with balance or a flexibility. And sometimes I'll, I'll, I won't always do everything. So sometimes I'll just work on strength one day and the next day I'll work on balancing exercises. And then I typically will cool a dog down for five or 10 minutes. You can go back to the bed to bed sprints. Um, and then you can, um, also do, um, uh, the spin and twist just to cool them down. Um, there's other, other exercises to work on flexibility and work on their, um, cooling them down things like that, but those will get you, um, get you done fast, um, get you done pretty quickly. And so that will lead you to about a 15 to 20 minute workout with your dog. And, um, it's so fun when I do these canine fitness classes here in Austin, Texas, like with these dogs. I always get pictures of dogs on the way back home asleep. Like they're just so <laughs> tired or when they get home, they's like, they said they haven't moved in two hours. Like it's like, and some of you guys are going like, that sounds exactly what I need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need to work out my dog. And the crazy thing is I'm so glad you talk about mental and how important that is because some people misunderstand how incredibly beneficial this can be for dogs is to do some mental exercises with your dog because, um, They've done studies with this that mental exercises are challenging your dog mentally, whether it be teaching them tricks or obedience or these canine fitness games is more physically tiring than actual physical exercise. And it sounds so backwards, but it's so true. And we've all been there where we've sat into, we've sat like at a meeting or we've sat through a presentation for half an hour, hour long, at the end of it, you just go feel like taking a nap because your brain's been working and moving. And maybe because you probably have such a great podcast here, you probably might, some of you guys might listen to these podcasts as you get so much information, like I need a nap after all this <laughs> yeah. stuff. But it, it's so true that if we work our dogs mentally, um, you'll see uh, such a benefit uh, with your dog's behavior um, and not getting such rambunctiousness that maybe that you're struggling with with your dog right now. I love it. I. My wheels are turning mentally. I've learned a lot on this episode and I'm sure our pup parents who are listening or watching are as well. And so I'm sure they are excited to go try these things out. So just to recap again, 
I want to emphasize that point again. Mental exercise is just as maybe more important. I don't know. What, what would you say? It's a little bit of both, but like, don't neglect it. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to get locked into having your dog do those one to two mile workouts. Like for instance, I have a border collie. Border collies were bred to work up to 70 miles a day. Mm. I am not going to be running 70 miles a day <laughs> with my dog. So when it comes to dogs too, when it, I would say your physicality uh, conditioning in your dogs, they did a study when I was doing my canine fitness stuff. I think dogs are like five times more aerobically capable um, than Lance Armstrong was in his time, in his prime. Um, wow. And so dogs just will out, out, outrun you day in, day out. Now, some of you guys with maybe some more lap type dogs you might say, no, I can't get my dog to walk across the room without taking a nap. <laughs> but, um, but I would say for a majority of dogs, people that probably listen to this podcast and love to do activities with their dogs, like, you probably felt that you probably it's like, it's like you've taken your dog for one mile walk and your dog comes back in, takes a 20 minute nap and is bonding and running around the house again. You're like, what am I supposed to do here? And I would encourage you just like, um, we, we just talk about extra exercises, teach your dog a brand new trick, do some canine fitness, um, work on some obedience skills inside your home, your foundations. Um, so much goes into your dog's foundations inside just your, your living room, um, your bedroom, whatever, wherever you can work your dog. Um, you, there's so many fun things and games you can do to help mentally wear your dog out, but also at the same time, physically give them the exercise that they need. Amazing. I again have learned a lot. I'm going to in the show notes, um, for everyone listening or watching, we're going to put all of Trevor's information where you can connect with him, learn more about what he's doing, check out his Instagram, YouTube, the whole works. We'll have it in there. Um, and just to recap, you know, if the weather's bad outside, that doesn't mean you're going to have to have a stir crazy rambunctious dog. There are these different activities, games that you can play. They're going to work your dog physically, work your dog mentally. Um, and, and on in the recap, um, because we turn all these episodes into a blog post, we'll have like really good examples. Some of them will be thrown in as videos. We'll have step-by-step information on how to do each of these activities. So I just want to say thank you again, Trevor, for coming on. I, I really did learn a lot and I'm excited to try some of these games with my own dogs because I've got two labs and they got a lot of energy and sometimes even just going for a jog isn't enough. So I, I'm really, really excited to, to try these out. Awesome. Well, it's been great um, over here at Doggy Dojo to assist anything that you guys need. And um, Popford, you guys have been so fantastic. And thank you for always bringing in so many amazing trainers, both on your Instagram. I see you guys got lots of great content on there um, and also just on, um, on Facebook. But I was so happy to see you guys had a podcast and I really appreciate the invite. Of course, I, I am super happy you're on here. Hopefully we're going to do it again. Um, and for those of you listening on a podcast platform, please leave a review. I look at all of them. We love the feedback. And if you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you want to see more of. And thank you so much for listening. And we will catch everybody on the next episode.